everybody, welcome to the chapel. Merry Christmas to you. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus up high today. We're going to sing of his greatness and his strength. He's bringing love and joy into the world. Come on, lift up your voices with us and sing.
My name is Brad, I'm one of our pastors here. And listen, it's that time of the year and Christmas is less than a week away. I hope you already got your, your Christmas shopping done, your gifts wrapped, uh, because listen, we've got seven Christmas services. That's right, I said seven Christmas services coming up on the 23rd and the 24th, on the 23rd at five and 7 p.m. and then on Christmas Eve at one o'clock, three o'clock, Five o'clock, come on, seven o'clock, and the 11 p.m. And all of those services are the same, a beautiful candlelight moment. There's gonna be kids' experiences at each one of those, except for the 11 p.m. because we're inviting our kids to come and be a part of the service. And I heard there's gonna be milk and cookies afterward. Come on, can't have Christmas Eve without milk and cookies. And this is the perfect time uh, it's the perfect time for you to invite your friends, your coworkers, your, your neighbors, your family members. So listen, uh, at the seat back in front of you, there's a stack of invite cards. You can just take that whole stack if there's a bunch left there already. And we want to encourage you to invite people to experience the life changing message of Jesus and be a part of a life giving church. It's going to be incredible. And we look forward to seeing you there. Now, listen. As we turn the page from 2022 to 2023, we want to let you know about our 21 days of prayer and fasting that are coming up. And all of the details are on our website, thechapel.cc slash 21 days. There's a prayer guide there, a ton of resources as we begin to lean in, look to a fresh start and give God our first in 2023. Anybody believe in for the best year ever? Come on, in 2023. So we look forward to you being a part of that. It's gonna be incredible. Why don't you stand up? We're gonna to continue to worship Jesus in this place. You know, the scripture calls him Emmanuel, which simply means God with us. He was with us in that first Christmas and when we gather together in a place like this, we know that he is with us in our midst and that those who trust and believe in him, come on, will be with him for all eternity. And it's because of that truth that we can gather together and we can join heaven's song to declare his glory. Anybody say amen? Come on, let's continue to worship together.
The angels glorify the king because they know that he's worth it. We worship, we give God our praise because we know that he's worth it. We're perfectly created by God to recognize and assign worth. That's what I love about when we come together to lift our voices and lift the name of Jesus high. It's because what we're doing is we're taking that way that he created us and we're pouring it right where it belongs. All the things that have competed all week for our attention and our affection, our adoration, our thanksgiving, our lives, pale in comparison to the one who has always been worth it. The one who receives our praise is the one who first loved us. He's our Savior. His name is Jesus, and he is worth it. Lift up your voices with me. Was my cross you bore so I could live in the freedom you died for? Now my life is yours, and I will see of your goodness forevermore. Sing word. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name.
Amen. Come on, high five six or seven people around you this morning. Come on, let them know I'm glad you're here at church today. I'm glad you're here at church today. I'm glad you're here at church today. So good. While you're being seated, let's welcome everyone watching online and the Hernando Correctional Facility as well. Absolutely. Such a joy and an honor that we get a chance to be your church. Uh, if we haven't gotten the chance to meet yet, my name is Pastor Kyle, and I'm honored to be one of your pastors here at the chapel. It's a privilege and a joy to do life and ministry with you and your family. Uh, it's also special to be able to walk into seven Christmas Eve services this week. Come on. Uh, our pastor, Pastor Q and Miss Trish, along with the rest of our team, we have been praying for not only you, but those you're going to bring with you. And if you're wondering who the people are you need to bring with you, it's the folks that you don't like on your job. Whoever it is that you're connected to, just slip them an invite card this week and let them know I'd love for you to be our guest at our church for one of our Christmas services. The reality is at this time of the year, it's often said that it is the most wonderful time of the year. Exactly, nobody. <laughs> because most of us, if you're, if you're anything like me, you, you know it's, it's one of the most stressful times of the year. Can I get an all oh, yeah right there? There you go, 27 of us, amen. Uh, it's stressful. You, there's so many things to do. You're hoping the Banana Republic box shows up to your front doorstep on time. Come on. You're hoping Amazon Prime is on time. Can I get a, oh yeah, right there. Yeah, some of us haven't even started Christmas shopping yet. I'm gonna go talk to this side over here. All right. And the reality is even in the most stressful time of the year, uh, that there still is something that God desires to speak to our hearts and do in our lives. I don't know about you, but sometimes it gets so stressful that I'd love to not just put my phone on Do Not Disturb, I'd like to put my life on Do Not Disturb. Come on, you know what Do Not Disturb is, right? Right? Uh-huh, because if I get one more text with one more question, if one more kid gets sick before Christmas, come on, parents, y'all going to make me lose my mind. Up in here, up in here. If I get put into one more group text that I never, here we go, it's bad English, but it's good preaching, that I ain't never asked to be in. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just like to put my whole life on what? Do not disturb. Leave me alone. However, I've found that in this life, there are moments where the disturbances that God brings are not to destroy us, but to develop us. And it's hard to reconcile how much we are loved by God when all we seemingly experience in some seasons of life is pain, agony, turmoil, conflict. Some of your relatives, you still haven't invite, invited them to Christmas uh, dinner yet. Come on. Because they just seemingly just can't get right. <laughs> and it disturbs us. But God's desire is that in the midst of the disturbance, we would realize that, here we go, that he is still good. Proverbs chapter 16 lays out for us what the pattern of our lives oftentimes looks like, and it reads a little bit like this. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. I got to be honest with you, in this room and watching online, this is one of my least favorite scriptures in all of the Bible. Like, pastor, what? <laughs> It's because of the fact that what brings me a lot of peace, and maybe you're similar to me, is that when my plans go according to plan, I'm at peace. Come on. You ever travel with the whole family, and when all of the flights are on time and everyone gets into TSA without having to strip down to their socks, come on, somebody, you feel a whole lot better because your plan went according to plan. 
But scripture is abundantly clear here that we can make our plans. But the Lord determines our steps. There's three thoughts that I'd love to introduce at the very beginning, and these are the only three thoughts that we're going to point to today. And I'd love to give you the end of the movie at the beginning of the movie, and then we'll work our way in between. You ready? I know some of you like to take pictures of the screen, so come on, get that burst ready on your camera. Here we go. Three thoughts. The first thought for today is this, is that God's plan and our expectations can be wildly different. Somebody said, close the Bible. Let's go home right there. Yep. Yep. Thought number two, no matter the disturbance, peace is always possible. And number three, the response we choose will dictate the power of peace we experience. Mm -hmm. There's two main characters that are central to the story of what you and I believe is the coming of Jesus as the newborn babe his parents, Mary and Joseph. Both of them experience what it's like to have a plan, but then the Lord decides he wants to change how they get there by way of their steps. And I've gotta be honest, my job today is not to preach the Christmas story in its entirety, it's only to pick at just a few things that will help us to, here we go, find comfort in our human experience that God is working all things together for the plan that he has according to his great purpose. Mary and Joseph, the Bible says, they were engaged to be married. Come on, all the married folks understand that it is not fun getting to the wedding day. Come on, somebody. Uh, historians tell us that Joseph would customarily go and prepare a place for he and his family to live and dwell, to raise a family together. His occupation was a carpenter, and so he was a master builder. And you'd find that this family was now preparing to walk into this time of joining together in marriage. However, you'll also find in this season now that Mary finds herself receiving some information about her future that not many would ever want to hear. We have the benefit of hindsight, and hindsight is always 2020. So when we look back, the Christmas story is beautiful in the way it's depicted and what it means to us. But in real time, there were two specific words that identified what the Christmas story was for Mary, Joseph, and other characters. Here we go. The two words they were full of, here we go, inconveniences and interruptions. Does this sound like your Tuesday afternoon right here? inconveniences and interruptions. They had a plan. I guarantee you they had a plan. They were going to get married. She was going to come to the altar in her white dress, and Joseph was going to go, hey. Uh, they, they were going to be together for a while. They had a five-year plan. They were going to wait a little while before they had their first child. They wanted to establish a little bit of an emergency fund and a savings account, a little bit of nest egg, put some away in that retirement fund. Come on, somebody, because you know when the kids come along, things just happen to Go somewhere. I don't know where, but they just go somewhere. Mary and Joseph, they had a plan, had a five-year plan. And then all of a sudden, there's an angel that shows up on the scene, and he depicts to Mary what is about to happen to her. Scripture is very abundantly clear that she is a virgin. She has not been with Joseph. They're trying to do the right thing. They're trying to get to the altar. They're, they're trying to make it happen according to how God has laid out for them to do it, and they're following every single thing, and then all of a sudden an angel shows up to Mary and says, Hey, Mary! I'm paraphrasing. This is how I read it. Hey, Mary! Got some news for you. Pause. For an angel to show up and talk to humanity, understand he is now breaking through what historians say is nearly 400 years of silence between God and man. And after 400 years, <laughs> this is how I read the Bible, follow me, the best you could do was a pregnancy announcement, a gender reveal, oh, and by the way, you ain't naming him either. <laughs> Read the room, Lord. Read the room. 
<laughs> and Mary's human reaction brings me so much comfort. Because scripture says this about what Mary says. Here we go. Scripture says she was confused and disturbed. Did this describe your last Friday right here? Has this described any portion of quarter one, two, three, or halfway through four of 2022? This definitely describes all of 2020. Confused and disturbed. And I love what scripture says about Mary. She tried to think what the angel could mean. As if it wasn't abundantly clear, boo-boo, you about to have a baby. <laughs> I don't know how much clearer it gets. Have you ever gotten information before and it left you confused and disturbed? Some of us are sitting in this room and watching online right now, and we have gotten information in the last 36 hours. And right now, we are sitting in our human skin, but our soul is what? Confused and disturbed. Can I invite you into the groove for a moment and just say you're in great company? Because Mary, the mother of Jesus, experienced what it was like to hear a promise from God that left her confused and disturbed. In the very human experience that we are all having currently, there will be moments as believers and followers of Jesus where something happens in our lives and it doesn't go according to the expectations that we all had and we're left with the emotions, the very human reaction of being confused and disturbed. If we were to fast forward this story just a little bit, Mary is now left with a very awkward conversation to have with her fiancé, Joseph. Because Joseph has been away preparing the place for them to live in. But Mary, after receiving this message from an angel, whom heaven has not sent to earth in nearly 400 years, according to historians, now she has to go and have a conversation with the man, Scripture says, that she is betrothed to, to explain to him what is going on anatomically and biologically right now. Clearly, this conversation did not go well. It's like the Maury Show, and you are not the father. How do, you, how do you know that this conversation did not go well? Because scripture says it like this, uh, Joseph, to whom she, Mary, was engaged, was a righteous, he was a good man. What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man. <laughs> and he did not want to disgrace her, what? Publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. Because Mary rolls up and she goes, hey, Joseph, this is how I read the Bible. Go with me for a second. Joe, hey, uh, hey, 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 babe. <laughs> hey, hey. How was your day? Good. Okay, good. Was it a good day? Was it a bad day? Kind of good, kind of bad? This is very important to where we're about to go. Uh-huh. Cool, cool. I'm pregnant. Want to have pizza tonight? <laughs> and Joseph who's also been saving himself and preparing, lean into the human tension here, saving himself and preparing to enter into this marriage covenant with this woman named Mary, who he's given his entire heart to, now is stuck hearing that she's pregnant and apparently the baby is from God? Don't judge me, come on, because you know you've asked the same thing before. What? And Joseph wants to do the honorable thing. He just wants to break the engagement quietly. He don't want the homies to find out what's going on. He don't want to out Mary. He doesn't want to be rude and blast her all over Instagram. He just wants to move on. Because none of this makes any sense. <laughs> ha! 
Have you ever been in a place in life before where something happens and none of it makes any sense? Okay, maybe that's just me. I don't know. I remember the first year that Danielle and I were married, uh, she called me about, uh, we, were, we were actually planning our first year anniversary trip. And she called me uh, from work one day and she goes, hey babe, um, I need you to come pick me up from work. I was like, oh, something wrong with the car? Mm -mm, something's wrong with me. Uh-oh, I can't walk. <laughs> I said, uh, I'm sorry, what do you mean you can't walk? You walked out of here this morning. You walked to your office. You, she said, I was at work and I got hurt and I can't walk. What she didn't know at the time that we would find out just a mere matter of days later is that she had torn her Achilles and we were gonna go through a 12 month rehabilitation process just to get her mobile again. During that 12 month process, it required me to drive her to work for three months in a row every Single day. Anybody that's been married longer than 72 hours knows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. For better or for worse, and then whoop, there it is. For worse shows up. Right, right, right there. Right, right there. Right there. Left me confused and disturbed. Left Danielle confused and disturbed, left us, here we go, confused and disturbed at how could this happen? Now, we're still married 11 years later and we got two kids. Clearly, we figured it out. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> but let's talk about the emotions and the tension that dwells on the inside of us during those seasons of confused and disturbed. Because we sing about how great God is and we talk about how great God is and we truly internally believe how great God is. But if we're all honest in this room and, and watching online, the greatness of God is sometimes hard to wrap our hands around because of how terrible things are going on around. And for us to admit that things are confusing and disturbing and that we'd rather run away than lean in does not make us bad. It actually makes us human. But no matter the disturbance, peace is always possible. And if we choose to lean into his peace, we will experience the power of his peace in a way that we never could imagine possible. Notice the language, I didn't say the emotion of peace, because peace is not an emotion. It is not something that comes and goes. Peace is a person, and his name is Jesus. And as long as we're connected to him, we will find peace no matter what. There's a change that happens after the very human reaction of both Joseph and Mary. Now, here we go. There is a chosen response that they both give themselves over to. Let's look at Mary's chosen response for a moment. I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. You know, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? But I bet she didn't know that one day his heart would be pierced and he'd bleed blood and water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters, but at the cost of giving his life up on a cross he never deserved? Mary, did you know that your baby boy has come to make us new, but the price of making us new, not better, new be at the cost of him being ridiculed and criticized, bruised, battered, and beaten, unrecognizable. What, what didn't happen here, Mary didn't get the snapshot of what she would have to go through as a mom to seeing her son Jesus become what the promise of God's word declares. 
And if we're honest, in this room and watching online, one of the hardest parts about being a believer and follower of Jesus is that he doesn't always give us a snapshot of what we're going to have to go through to get to the promise that he has given us in prayer and in worship and in our time with God. And if we're really candid in this season, oh, that might be the hardest part about following God. How could a good God allow bad things to happen to good people? Old song says many things about tomorrow I, I don't seem to understand. Here we go. But Mary declares what we have the chance to choose. I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. I would quit tomorrow following Jesus if he wasn't with me everywhere that I went. And if we're honest, so would you. One of the greatest promises in all of Scripture is that what God says will come true. It will come true. Oftentimes, we've just got to ask him to help us get through our broken expectations and remind us that he is always what with us Emmanuel God with us not only did Mary sign up with a very chosen response to what God has said but Joseph also signed up to here we go walk with her through the process how do you know this? Joseph's response here in Matthew chapter 1, after waking up and getting a message from the angel that spoke to Mary, also spoke to him, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Man, that's hard. With the ridicule of the community seemingly coming at will with the whispers as you walk through Publix. I know they didn't have it, but just go with me. Come on. <laughs> the challenges, the questions. You know what didn't get displayed to Joseph when he agreed to do what the Lord had commanded? What didn't get displayed to Joseph was the fact that, hey, Joseph, by the way, after Jesus is born, Herod, the king of the nation, he's going to try to kill every baby boy two years and younger, including your son. So pick him up, take him to the African country of Egypt, and house him there in safety until I come through an angel and talk to you again to let you know you can go back home. What God's doing here is he's developing their ears to be tuned to his voice so that they're not, here we go, not following their feelings, but following his word. Maybe that's the message that God wants us to extract from this today, that the disturbances in our lives are not here to destroy us or distract us. They're here to develop us. So that we wouldn't be moved by what we see, we wouldn't be moved by what we hear, and we wouldn't be moved by what we feel. Are all of those things real and need to be embraced? Absolutely. We're humans. Ignoring any of them would cause us to lose our minds. But then we take them, bringing every thought captive, and go, God, what do you want me to do with this? And in every difficult step that Joseph and Mary had, historians tell us it was nearly a 90-mile journey to the place where Mary gave birth. It's like traveling on a donkey 10 miles a day from here in Tampa to Orlando. Pregnant, fully pregnant. I've been around a fully pregnant woman twice. Mm -hmm. We'll leave that right there. Come on, right there. Joseph, hey, you're going to take him to Egypt. Mm -hmm. You know what that means? He's going to have to find a new business network to develop, new ways to provide for his family. Never been there before. Gosh, how do, how do we get there? Where do we go? Where do we live? How do we get back? When do we get back? When's the angel showing up? Wouldn't it be easier to follow God if he would give us expiration dates on promises? All right, y'all quiet. I'm going to go talk to them over here. Hey, hey, bye. Uh, Ju June 
7th, 2023, this is, whoop, that's what's going to happen. Right there, right there. Man, I, the confidence that would arise would be incredible. I'd be a model believer. <laughs> that ain't how God works. Because he grows us from faith to faith. Here we go, from valley to valley, from challenge to challenge, from hardship to hardship, training us to be more in tune with his voice than we are with what we want. And the thing he provides in this season and in every season is his peace. It's peace, it's not a secret. It's peace is a principle and a promise. There's a ton of promises that we can hang on to, but I'm just going to point to one today found in Isaiah chapter 26, and it reads like this, and this is specifically pointing to peace. You, God, will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are what? Fixed on you. My favorite part about this entire thing is that he will keep me. He will keep you. Let's just be honest, we don't have the ability to keep ourselves. We're incredibly resourceful human beings and we have accumulated education and experiences and understanding now to where we can make it through so much. We've outlasted our darkest days. We are very resourceful in our own right. But there's still someone else who has kept us to this point. Because there have been moments in your life where losing your mind was what you were experiencing, but he kept you. There were moments where you were ready to quit on life altogether, but the fact that you are still here and watching live or watching later is the proof that he still kept you. Depression has been knocking at your door for a decade, but you are still here. He still kept you. That cancer diagnosis is screaming at you right now, but you are still anchored to his peace because you are allowing him to what? Keep you. That divorce would have taken everybody else out because they leaned to their own understanding, but you leaned in to who he was and who he promised to be, and brother, sister, you are still here because he kept you. Oh, I wish you'd high five somebody next to you and just tell them he is keeping me right now. He is keeping me right now. Burying loved ones, but he's still keeping me. Lost a job, but he's still keeping me. Unemployment running out, but he's still keeping me. More needs than I've ever had in my life, but he's still keeping me. Emotional traumas got you on a therapist couch right now, and you had no idea you'd ever be here, but you are on the right couch at the right time with the right one because he is keeping you. Mm -hmm. He's keeping me. What's he keeping me in? Perfect peace. Come on. The kind of peace Jack Daniels can't provide. I don't care how many gummies you eat. <laughs> Perfect peace. But here's where the work goes in. You ready? All who what? Trust in you. In this room and online, all of us, here we go. You live life long enough, we all got trust issues. And the greatest challenge sometimes for us in trusting God is that we equate God to others. And no matter how much you love them or how great they are, at some point they all gonna let you down. But if you just try them, no, when I say try him, I don't just mean like give him a, t a trial run for seven days, and if he don't show up, I'm out. No, I mean, I mean, wholeheartedly and fully commit, not to embracing the rules and the regulations of God, but the relationship he wants to have with us. And when we do that, he helps our thoughts to remain anchored on him. 
I challenge you this week. Here we go. Put it to work. What's one thought? Just one. Just one. If you're a little dysfunctional like me, there's more than one, but just one. What's one thought that tries to draw you away from who God created you to be? Just one thought. Is there a doubt? Is there an old wound? And it produces thoughts, he must not like me, he must not love me, he must not want me, he must not need me, he must not, he must not, whatever it is, but just one thought. Go, God, this week is my week to experience your perfect peace by keeping my thoughts anchored, bolted down, nailed, solidified to who you are. And then just worship him. Through your obedience, you worship him. Through your time that you set aside each morning or each evening or during your lunch break, you, you get in his word and you repeat who he is and you worship him. We'll end the plane right here. Because there's something that we do in the disturbance that will help us to see who he is in this season and in every season to come. I had a reminder of this just recently. Our kids, uh, they've been sick on and off for like the last month, and if you ask me why, I could tell you why. They don't wash their hands. And every parent said amen, right? <laughs> you know, but part of signing up to be a parent is you're going to be there. So our daughter had a 103-degree fever, and she's... She's kind of inconsolable at the moment. And I'm sitting out on the patio trying to get just a little bit of work done before dinner. You ever been there before? If I could get this last email out right before dinner, I'd be fully present at the dinner table. Come on, somebody. Just a fight. Here we go. And in the background, I had, I had Pastor Jay playing from, from First Wednesday, and he was leading the song Champion. You are my champion. Giants fall when we call out your name. And so I was playing this. Somehow I exited out of the YouTube app and this little bitty voice speaks up and goes, Daddy, I'm trying to do it. Daddy, I was worshiping to that. I felt like it was in that moment that God reminded me. She's got 103 degree fever and you didn't even think she was paying attention. But she's choosing to believe in the God who I declare myself to be, even though she doesn't feel like it right now. And I'm reminded what Jesus says, that for us to come to him by faith, we must come, here we go, with the faith of a child. And he came as a child. And showed us that because he can, we can also. Take it with you this week. And when you're tempted to put your life on do not disturb, say, God, if you're disturbing me, it's because you're developing me. And I trust you. Amen? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you so much for your presence and your power. Thank you that the God of Mary and Joseph is the God of December 2022 as well. We embrace you today. Help us. Give us courage. Give us strength. Give us wisdom. And thank you that you are with us everywhere that we go. We choose to receive your peace in exchange for the trust that we extend to you. You are God, and above you there is none other. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, come on, stand to your feet with me all over the room. Our prayer team is right here up in the front of the worship center. If you want someone to agree with you in prayer, if you're online, they're in the host comments right now to pray with you for any needs you may have. God bless you. We'll see you at Christmas Eve. Thank you for joining us for service today. We love that we get to serve you and your family. If you'd like to continue your worship experience through giving, we have three simple, quick, and secure ways for you to do so. First, you can use text to give Simply compose a text message with the keyword, the chapel, followed by your gift amount to 77977. Hit send and follow the prompts. Or visit our website, thechapel.cc give and complete your giving online. 
Finally, you can always mail in your giving to the chapel at 8833 Mitchell Boulevard, Trinity, Florida, 34655. Thank you for your continued generosity. We could not and would not want to do this without you.